Your website is the mousetrap. Your content is the cheese. Welcome to Content Matters with Barry Feldman and Andy Crestina. They type their email. They click submit. What happens next? They get to a thank you page, maybe. They get an auto response, maybe. Or maybe the marketer went a little farther and created a series of emails that they get over the next several days, several weeks even, that welcome them, that welcome them to the email list. So today on Content Matters, we are talking about that exact topic, the welcome email series. Yeah, good. I I think also, you know, on your list wasn't the... um wasn't you playing devil's advocate where what happens next is nothing, you know? (laughs) Sure. What happens next? Nothing. (laughs) So so what happens next being nothing is, um, kind of rude. I mean, it's, I suppose uh, there's a percentage of companies that uh, don't have a welcome email series or a thank you page, but, um, it's almost like, like in a, in a retail metaphor, like somebody walked across your lease line and they started looking at your merchandise and you ignored them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let's not ignore it. So we're going deep on this topic of the welcome series email. Uh, this is Andy from Morbid Media and my co-host is Barry Feldman from Feldman Creative, who's an expert on this topic, who just wrote about this topic for my blog or on Orbit site. Um, so let's jump in. You, you're, you're a bit more expert than me on this one. And so I'm going to be learning uh, as well as our listeners. Uh, where do we start? Well, I guess you start saying, um, what am I going to do? It, you know, we're going to talk about uh, conversion tactics uh, a little, little bit today to get people on your email list. And so uh, why did they do that? Uh, how can we help them? Uh, what, um, you know, what piece of bait did they bite such that... Um, they belong on our email list in the first place. And so a lot of questions need to be answered about whether you have one email list or segmented email list or you know, email list per uh, promotion or per product line or so forth. But, you know, the idea is that um, email is a tough business. We all do it. It's one mm-hmm. of the, you know, the, be- the best ways to privately connect with people. It's one of the best ways to personalize stuff. And mm-hmm. ultimately, it's one of the best ways to sell. But uh, it's a noisy, noisy world. You know, guys like you and I, and probably most of the world, uh, get far more email than they want. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so on the, on, from the marketer's point of view, when they're be, um, behind the scenes looking at their data, uh, it's usually not that uh, encouraging. You know, the, the open rates and the click-through rates are, you know, surprisingly low. So with a welcome series, you are talking to somebody right away. You know, the headline I wrote for your blog is how to engage prospects immediately. They haven't forgotten you. You're not spamming them. You're not surprising them. They just said, market to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it's the warmest moment. You are striking while the iron's hot. And if there's a a point at which they are at their peak of interest in your brand, it's the moment they filled out that form because uh, uh, something they saw uh, triggered that trust, that action and conversion. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's like um, one of the very first things that you do with the person post-conversion. They were a, a minute ago, they were a visitor. Now they are totally new status, different kind of person. They're a subscriber. So uh, we're going to welcome them to it with, what, personal tone, um, added value. Uh, what, is the wel- what is the series, how many emails, what frequency or interval, and what do they include? <laughs> You're not messing around today, Andy. Uh- <laughs> Uh, I want to know. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's not like, you know, you you send uh, 7.6 over 9.4 days. Uh, it's going to, you know, it, the formula is going to uh, sway uh, based on experimentation and perhaps intuition and certainly uh, what you're trying to accomplish. But uh, I think you ask yourself these questions. I'm, I'm going to cheat here and use uh, the stuff that I wrote for your blog. I, I think you think of it as... All right, uh, the, you know, we're going to strike when the iron's hot. The iron's hot. They just gave us their email. How can we help them? You know, so mm-hmm. let's ourselves ask these questions. Uh, what could we say that would make them feel welcome? You know, could we use their name? Could we recognize what they just did? Could we say thank you for coming to XYZ website or XYZ page or XYZ offer? Mm-hmm. Uh, how can we better acquaint them with our brand's products, services, or content? You know, if, if, if they were shopping for... Uh, you know, toothpaste, toothpaste or, you know, shoes or something that's not a big risky decision. You'd probably, you know, think about uh, deals and coupons and loyalty clubs and, you know, and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. forth as opposed to, you know, if they're 
visiting Orbit Media Studios and they're going to make this, you know, big, longer decision about um, uh, choosing a partner to help them create their website or they're visiting Feldman Creative and they're looking at a content marketing consultant. And so there, you know, the question would be, what's what's a good way to acquaint them with our with our brand without uh, chasing them away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and and they might've actually had an offer in mind, right? This person may have converted because they wanted a download. So that email is going to include the download. You know, the very first thing we're going to do is lift up the promise. If we promise them something. Yeah. Um, So that question is why did they opt in? Right. How can we be helpful? How can we engage them? Uh, How can we win their business? I I don't know how many times we've talked about uh, Brian Dean. Obviously, uh, we both respect uh, his tactics. And I learned from from, from, an email tactic from him about welcome emails once that uh, I've tried and I love. He simply says, write back to me. Mm. Tell me something. And that person's going to remember that a lot more than any other welcome email if they do it. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going to have a friend. Yeah, and here's a famous, almost unimaginable story by Chris Gillibo from uh, author, world traveler, founder of the World Domination Summit, uh, literally emailed a thank you, and, and this is obviously automated in the welcome series, but he did it personally. I imagine these emails were very much the same one to the next. Welcome to my newsletter. Is there anything I can help you with? To his first 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> And his question was, how can I help you? He wanted, basically, he was using his email list growth as a listening tool to learn more about what his audience wanted to find out, what, why they subscribed. He asked everyone why they subscribed. Uh, so uh, that's an extreme example. Uh, I think I'm a high-touch, high-response guy. If I can be, uh, he blows it out of the water. Uh, I confirmed that with him recently. Um, and uh, that's a, that is right there, you know, marketing empathetic legend yeah chris brogan uh you know his his shtick is he uh, loves his coffees and teas mm-hmm. and so his email starts off with what he's drinking you know, mm-hmm. when you opt into his series uh, one of the first things he's going to ask you is what are you drinking <laughs> mm-hmm. yep starting a conversation yeah when mm-hmm. i asked him that i go you know is that to invite people into your life you know it's it's really you know it's a degree of personal but it, it's not like you know i'm revealing you know big secrets or talking about my family or anything. He said, no, it's to get people to write back. This is not going where I thought it would. I'm surprised. I thought we were going to be, you know, find your top converting posts or your most shared articles and just create a semi-standard series of three emails over two weeks and just send your best. But actually this is um, right. We're going down a different path, suggesting that the next response to someone who subscribes might be something inviting a dialogue yeah, um, but you know the key word there is it might you know so the the question that I threw out there when um, you said where to get started was you know how can we engage this person if that person is you know, again you know shopping for uh, today I bought um, kitty litter uh, ki- kitty litter liners you know? <laughs> okay I, I, I don't thanks for that have, info I, yeah I don't, I don't want to have a conversation with that company about you know <laughs> my favorite coffee and tea or I don't I don't want to write back to them period you know I want to um, you know know what a related products are or, you know if I can get a coupon the next time around and so forth so you know I kinda, it kind of depends so yeah I think you know we aren't just talking about the first email somebody gets from you after joining your email list while that that probably is the most important email mm-hmm. email welcome series should be a sequence mm-hmm. and I can't tell you how long it should be, but it should probably be three. You know, you, I think that's what you do. It could be 10, yeah. you know, it probably shouldn't be 50. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe in between numbers, 10 and 50, it could be opt in, opt out, you know, describe yourself better. But when I did it and I did it effectively, it definitely was about content. You know, that's why uh, you opted in. And I answered questions like, you know, what are my most popular posts? What could you expect to get from me in uh, future Mm -hmm. emails? Mm -hmm. Uh, Why, you know, eventually why you might want to hire me, you Mm -hmm. know, Uh, and, and some, you know, questions that, um, you know, trying to kind of play the Chris Brogan game or the thing I talked about with Brian, some questions like, you know, um, where are your pain points in digital marketing? You know, trying to, trying to create a dialogue. So there's mm-hmm. no one way to go and there's lots of ways to go. Yeah. I, I think if there's a classic, let me sketch it out. And I'm, and I, I know lots of people that do these, but I can't say that I've like set up tons of these programs before. If there's a classic welcome series email, it would be when the person subscribes, they immediately get a response back, thanking them for joining 
maybe asking them a question, offering them more content and setting an expectation about what else will be coming. A few days or maybe a week later, there's another email that includes a link that's per short, concise, personal tone, but also contains a link to deeper content. And that you might pull from analytics or BuzzSumo as being one of the top shared or top converting posts or something like that. And then maybe after another week or two, there'd be a third email that goes deeper, maybe ask, maybe offering to have the person take another action, follow us somewhere else or download this the thing or find me on LinkedIn. Uh, always a personal tone, always concise, basically offering more content or each email is an invitation to come back to the website. And then sometimes people go deeper with that. It could be a, you know, a fourth and fifth and sixth email. They go to seven people, right? Like relatively long sequences. And they're sent out over... Uh, intervals usually around a week at a time going out sometimes over a, a month or two, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, the longer it goes on and you have to experiment with this, probably the more you're leaning towards a sales message. You know, that's why uh, you do email marketing, but, you know, there is some risk with the sales message being uh, your last message, right? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they didn't want to be sold to and they opted out. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, you do that with a soft touch. I think if, if they're reading your 11th or, you know, 15th email <laughs> or what have you, um, you know, they, they enjoy your email and it's, it's not out of bounds. You might start uh, thinking about your funnel at that point. You know, you certainly, if you're answering the question, you know, how can we be most engaging? How can we be most helpful? Well, uh, the answer is is probably going to be your content if you're a content marketer, and mm-hmm. that content is you know then you got to start experimenting with it. Is it a webinar? You know, is it an ebook? Is it uh, your podcast? Mm-hmm. I yeah. have this. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I think that's interesting. This is um so th- so there's a point though at which you may just send a pure sales email. Sounds like right. Well, yeah, I think I, like at the, if if what I did was like I said. I think you're going to like this post, kind of something like that, like you did, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it wasn't so segmented that I, you know, the post was specific to where they opted in. It was just like, it's one of my most popular posts, you know, mm-hmm. then it was like, I think you're going to like this, um, hub page I made. That's like my 30 best articles about content marketing. Mm-hmm. So I just started like sort of introducing what I thought were the ACE cards in the Feldman creative uh, deck of, of content marketing. Mm-hmm. Then I said, before it was over, I said, you want some help with your content marketing? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Now, um, the in, in case anyone's wondering, I think that the mechanism that we use is native to MailChimp and that it's a pretty standard feature and that the, uh, the setup process is really nothing very complex and that it's not very difficult to track because this, is, this, is all, this all gets its own campaign name which is one of the UTM tracking parameters so that your welcome email um, messages all, even though they're not timed with like that spiky campaign report where every new big newsletter is a big drop and you get a certain number of visits from that thing. These are going to be meted out right across o- over time. Uh, and this is all in addition to whatever the list that they're now on, um, which might add whatever frequency you're sending. Yeah. They should be. I mean, MailChimp knows how to simplify it, and obviously um, they dominate that business and they know what they're doing. So I I would um, uh, endorse that advice that your first one is as uncomplicated as can be so that you don't um, confuse yourself and scare yourself. You know, there's no end in sight to where you can go with segmentation and personalization and in marketing automation. Of course, there's uh, you draw flow charts and you say, if this, then that, right? Mm-hmm, so an email, mm-hmm. that would be if they opened it, if they clicked through, if they didn't, you know, if they ignored three in a row, if they read three in a row, you know, mm-hmm. so that there's, that's endless. But rather than torture yourself with all that marketing automation, if you're new to mm-hmm. uh, a welcome series, uh, simply write one, you know, and, and apply it to as many people <laughs> on your list and, you know, start engaging. You know, it's, like I said, it's better than having people walk into your store and um, pretending they don't exist. Yeah, I think this is one of those set it and forget it things that a marketer can do probably in uh, in a half a day, maybe, right? Uh, this isn't a major time investment. And that once it's in place that you'll uh, you'll want to go refresh it once in a while because the links that you were promoting through that through that series uh, maybe aren't your favorite things anymore or aren't the best uh, that you've got to offer. So uh, but this is really one of those nice things in marketing that you that um, unlike a lot of uh, social activity or a lot of email marketing activity, uh, you can just put it in place, and now you've yeah. got that program covered. And 
Yeah, you make a great point. It's um, it's automatic. Uh, this post has a list from uh, I borrowed it from um, vertical me- is it vertical vertical measures vertical, mm-hmm. vertical response, not vertical measures. Okay, not that, not that I don't love vertical measures, but vertical response. Seven reasons you need a welcome series, and um, one of them is it's. Saves time. It's easy. The work is done in advance once and everything else is handled automatically. So like you said, yeah, you know, the offer didn't work. The content uh, got uh, updated or eliminated or changed. And so there's there's reasons to go back and tinker with it. But um, it is uh, a great, you know, return on investment of your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one, this kind of thing makes sense to me. I like things in marketing that are uh, sort of setup things or one-time things. It feels more like an investment. Like you, like you take an action and you get a more durable benefit from it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, this the software people they keep making that sweeter and sweeter with um, you know, with the with the automation options. So yeah, I think if uh, you know, we won't have time to go through everything I, I wrote in the post on Orbit Media, but uh, we'll we encourage people to do that. That are listening, uh, go to the you know the page that you found on Orbit or Feldman Creative and, and find your way to this post because if you're looking for ideas to do this and you don't want your one, two, three or you know one through seven to be exactly as we've outlined, there's a long list of ideas about about things that you might try. Right. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, mm-hmm. number five, offer exclusives. That's a really cool idea. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, you're on my email list. I'm going to offer you something that I only offer to people on my email list. Ah, I like that insider. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hopefully that's true. But even if there's like a slight degree of truth to it, you know, like it was customized for your email list. You know, I think, I think I just gave away my cheese for today. Oops. Um, <laughs> here's another one. Here, here's, here's a welcome email series 101. You know how you have your uh, three Ps and I guess mm-hmm. we, all, we all like our sort of shortcuts. I came up uh, with the triple A, the triple A mm-hmm. of the welcome email series, acknowledgement, mm-hmm. affirmation, and appreciation. Uh-huh. So somewhere in this first email and probably mm-hmm. all of these emails, you're going to say, I acknowledge, you're going to acknowledge you, I'm mm-hmm. acknowledge you, you know, you responded to this, you know, mm-hmm. this, this page, this download, this webinar, whatever. And then you're going to affirm them. You're going to say, um, you're on my email list now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you're going to appreciate it, you know, like, mm-hmm. like a thank you page. You're going to say, uh, thank you. Uh, here's what you can expect. Or here's, here's, um, something that I don't offer to just everybody. Yeah. I bet there are pe- – this is kind of a creative um, uh, opportunity for creativity as far as marketing tactics go. And I can picture so many things that people might be doing here, um, things with visuals or things with different kinds of offers or things with different frequency or ways to uh, uh, engage people maybe over much longer time frames um, or – fast things to do immediately, right? Like thank you page stuff. Like you've got like a video for the, your new subscribers. I, I would love to get some feedback or comments, or social posts or mentions or anyone that wants to just uh, let us know what they're doing with their welcome series emails. Because uh, I've got a feeling that, that, that um, we've got some listeners who've tried some fun stuff with this. Yeah, I would think you're right. That would be a cool conversation. And you know, as we're talking about it, you know, we're, we're, falling into the trap that we often do that uh, we're kind of soft sellers with content marketers. You know, we want you to be subscribers and readers and, you know, part of our tribe and stuff, but you know, not everybody wants that. I do uh, the majority of what I do for SaaS companies. And so I'm thinking about how they go about things. And perhaps one of the most important and most common tactics for a welcome series is addressing people that are um, sitting on the fence. You know, mm-hmm. they, they did the freemium thing. They did the limited edition thing. They did the limited time thing. Uh, they, um, you know, what they went to a page where um, a credit card was required, but they didn't hand it over. You know, so mm-hmm. those, those welcome series would say, how can we help you get started? You know, mm-hmm. Would, mm-hmm. You like, would you like to watch a video? You know, would you like to read our tips? Would you like to come to our forum? Would you like to join our Facebook, you know, private page and so forth? So it all really gets reverse engineered from, you know, uh, what you're trying to accomplish and why they opted in in the first place, you know, so Mm -hmm. why they opted in the first place is an abandoned, um, Mm. software trial, you know, thing somewhere in the, somewhere in the funnel, they bailed, you know, you got the reverse engineering suggests, how can we help them, you know, and, and and you're also thinking at the same time, and if we can't help them, then they don't, they don't really want to be on this email list. Yep. And that's fine too. The key to email is not send email to people that don't want email. Um, 
<laughs> We're almost ready to move on here in a minute, uh, if you've got last words. But before that, I want to mention that I'm looking at the stats for our welcome series email. Uh, it looks like it's a three-series email, immediate, three days later, and eight days later. Uh, the immediate email has an open rate of 50%. The three days later has an open rate of 40% and an almost 20% click-through rate. And the eight days later is still very high, 36% open rate. Consider B2B emails, you know, 20% would be pretty good. Uh, and uh, a 16% click-through rate. So these are, I'm, I'm looking at numbers that are roughly double what you'd expect in a super generic, broad brushstroke B2B uh, email benchmark. Um, pretty good. <laughs> Those numbers look pretty good. Yeah, that's an understatement. Those are amazing numbers. Double at least. I don't know. Um, you know, my email generally, I have new content, you know, kind of like yours. And uh, I get pretty excited if I have a 20% open rate, click throughs mm-hmm. in the 2 to 5% range. You know, it's, it's hard and getting harder. You know, email's such a, you know, yeah, noisy, <laughs> flooded. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's it's tough. So uh, and and we we don't maybe don't say this enough, but in the end, the everything hinges on the quality of that piece that you sent. Right, the world is not waiting for another medium quality blog post. Yeah, yeah. Go along. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're looking for um, you know, they're looking for what they're looking for. So I think you know, there's clues that they leave when they come to your website. And um, yeah, you can, like I said, you can come up with every if then scenario that you want to. I, if you, you know, revealed that uh, data to me about uh, your first three emails, which I think in your case is you know the only three, mm-hmm. uh, my conclusion, conclusion might be that's not enough email, you know, that it's going so well, keep sending more email. You're right. <laughs> you know, but, but you are, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's not as related to the, what the day you opted in. Yeah. They're just at the biweekly mode. We don't send that often. And, uh, yeah, actually I think that's good advice for anybody in general, test your comfort zone, push your, th- push your threshold a little bit, uh, get uncomfortable with your frequency because, um, uh, the more you send, the more traffic you get that as a general rule. Uh, so send quality, but, uh, we should all be a little bit outside what, what, uh, we're totally comfortable with. Uh, marketing is partly about experimentation and not enough marketers are testing, uh, you know, weekend sends or, uh, doubling their frequency. I mean, just, uh, keep quality up, but then, uh, uh, get out there. <laughs> Stay, keep activity levels very high, as high as you can maintain. Yeah, be prepared to fail with email. You know, um, I suppose that sounds a little scary if your email list is you know twenty five or hundred people or something like that. But uh, you want people on your list that um, you know gain value from opening your email. And if you're looking at open rates of you know fifty, forty, thirty five, uh, they uh, you're doing you know you're doing something right. You can push yourself a little bit, but you know, yeah, if that number dips way down, um, you know, perhaps uh, the size of your email list isn't as important as the quality of your email mm-hmm. list. I think, I think that's that's probably pretty common knowledge now. Okay, anything else before we do? Uh, before we catch some ice? <laughs> I, I, I think we've done good. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, for cheese, you know, when we get into. Um, the Feldman creative segment about cheese. We're talking about content. I sort of tipped this card already, but uh, while we're on the topic of a welcome series email, yeah, I think uh, my tip that I've um, mentioned ever so slightly already is that it's a good idea to create content that is explicitly for email subscribers that are new. Mm. And so that could relate again to, uh, you know, a webinar that demonstrates how to use something, a case study that demonstrates, you know, how, how you solve the problem, a comparison that shows, you know, there's, there's five leaders in this field and we're one of them and here's how we compare. You know, there's just a lot of ways to go about that. And then on a, on a uh, e-commerce or retail, um, uh, realm or element, if, if you're talking about, you know, what's, what's, what's to come there that's special, it would be, it would be an offer, you mm-hmm. know? And sure. so, you know, like I said, you know, we, we learn that you like cats or you like dogs, you know, here's a program we offer that we only offer to, you know, for emails, uh, subscribers for a limited time, or we only offer for first time buyers or what have you. So, uh, yeah. So make a part of, uh, a, your 
welcome email series and B, your content marketing thinking uh, and overlap of the two. How can I offer content that is exclusively offered to new subscribers? Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that's uh, in that exclusive idea. That's just great. Um, Great. So that's the cheese tip, the content and traffic tip. I've got a conversion tip as in the mousetrap piece in this mousetrap part of the program. I want to uh, dedicate my last few minutes here to an email sign-up form on Chris Ducker's website. Chris is an expert in um, outsourcing and working with virtual assistants, and he wrote Virtual Freedom. It's a great book. ChrisDucker.com at the top of the page has a masterpiece of email subscribes. I'll, uh, I'll jump into it here for just a second. Uh, first of all, at the top of the visual hierarchy, in other words, the most thing, prominent thing at uh, at the top of his page is him. It's a face, and you can't miss that. It's super personal, very powerful. He's also looking to the right. And by the way, our eyes move left to right as in- readers of the English language anyway, so he's uh, kind of gravity, plus his face is driving us that direction toward the headline. The headline gives you an offer. He's got another P there. That's a, that's a, a promise and a present. And now when we go par- farther down the page, right, he's got uh, differentiation and what you get and how-to stuff, little checklist. And then below that, there is the sign-up with the contrasting color on the call to action, which is get instant access. So put in your name, email, and then get instant access. That is uh, reassuring the visitor that they're going to get something quickly. So uh, it's just kind of a minor masterpiece of conversion. Uh, the visuals the offer, uh, the color, the hierarchy, the to- the massive prominence. It's intense, right? This thing is big at the top of the page. So um, I just think that uh, it's a combination of many things. Conversion is not a simple science. Uh, but use faces. Be specific about the benefit. Go big on visual prominence. Use contrasting color to guide attention to that thing that you want them to do. And it all combines to maximize the percentage of the visitors who subscribe. And now they're getting your welcome series. Ducker, ducker, ducker. Yeah, he, he's done everything right. I think that what, what jumps off the page for me while uh, you made the list, you know, completely, he just, he just aced it. He did it awesome is the uh, iPath thing. And you've probably seen, I think, Kiss Metrics. No, no, Crazy Egg does this where they show the baby's looking at you or the baby's looking at the headline. You know, <laughs> same baby, same photo shoot. The baby looking at the headline works better to get people to read the headline. And that's what Chris has done. You look where they look. We are empathetic humans, and we can't resist. If they see a picture of someone looking in a direction or if everyone on the street corner is looking up, you're going to look up. And that's a marketing tactic and something that magazine and photo editors have known for years, and it's something that anyone can do whenever they choose to use a face in their marketing. Have that person looking never off the page but toward the offer, back toward the page, toward the content. Uh, It's a literally line of sight. Draw that invisible arrow. All right, Content Matters listeners, hear ye, hear ye. Do not miss this preview and our next episode. You would be out of your ever-loving mind because we're going to talk about common SEO mistakes. We're going to talk about it with uh, one of the world's best analytics users and SEO advisors. His name's Andy. Uh, He has an A student, or at least I'm Hmm. forever trying to be an A student, which is me. (laughs) And so... Be good. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't talk about SEO as much as we sh- we should. Maybe we take it for granted, but you know, people um, people go on into overflow rooms to hear you talk about it when you uh, travel the country. And so we're simply going to talk about the common mistakes people make with SEO, and you know that's that shouldn't be hard, right? Yeah, uh, it, I I feel like we should almost apologize for not doing this one earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> Very good. Looking forward to the next one. It's going to take a little time. All right, thanks.